Hi, boys and girls. This will be the last version of Pleasant Pathways from Poppy, our storytelling time until April 20th. You say, well, why is that? I say, well, because you are going on spring break. And so hopefully during that time, you can remember some of these stories. I'll be spending the spring break looking for some more good stories to bring back to you as soon as you return to your distance learning school on April 20th. Okay, our book today is one that I took from Ms. Bridelson's room. I hope she doesn't mind. A Picture of God, three in one. And I thought this would be a perfect one to read to you on uh, Maundy Thursday, before Good Friday, and before Easter Sunday. A Picture of God, three in one. You see a picture of an apple there. There's going to be a comparison made between God in three persons and an apple here. Everybody loves an object lesson, and this is going to be a good one for you. So here we go, a picture of God, three in one. Lots of apples there. Remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Don't forget that one. Okay. Here is one apple, and there is only one true God. The apple has three parts, the peel, the flesh, and the core. The one true God has three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three parts of the apple are apple. The peel is apple, it is not orange, it is not banana. The flesh is apple, not a pear, not a plum, and the core is apple. It's not a grapefruit, it's not a watermelon. But these three, peel, flesh, core, are not three apples, but just one apple, just different parts of the same apple, okay? All three persons of the one true God are God. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. And God the Holy Spirit is God. But these three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are not three gods, but just one God. The three in one. Sometimes talked about as the Trinity. Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Trinity. The three parts of the apple have different purposes. The peel protects. Sometimes people cut the peel off the apple because they don't like to eat it. But my mother always told me that was the best part for you. It keeps the apple healthy. The flesh of the apple is good to eat. Lots of good things to eat are made from the flesh of the apple. Apple pie, apple crisp, apple sauce, apple cider, apple dumplings, apple jelly, apple sauce cake, apple fritters. Probably some more things you can think of too. But the apple is one of God's great creations and a fruit of the spirit that I would call it this morning. The core of the apple contains seeds from which apple trees grow. See those seeds inside the core of the apple there. When just one apple seed is planted in the ground, what do you think happens? The result is many, many apples. I have an apple tree in my backyard uh, that was planted well over 40 years ago. It's, the blossoms have come out now and guess what? In several weeks, there will be lots and lots and lots of apples to pick. And I like to go out there and just grab one, pull it off and eat it just as soon as I've picked it. It's a great, great thing for you to eat and a very healthy food. All right. Like the apple, <clears throat> the three persons of the one true God have different purposes. God the Father is our protector. He made us. He loves us and protects us. Makes, uh, makes even bad things turn out for our good. 
It's important to remember that in the middle of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, isn't it? That he makes bad things turn out for our good. He keep things, keeps things growing so we have food. You, me, all people, all things, even apples, cows, carrots, even apples. He keeps us growing so we have food. He loves us and protects us, makes even bad things turn into our good. That's God, the Father. Sometimes we do things that God doesn't like. God said there must be a punishment for these things. That would make us very sad. It would hurt a lot for a very long, long time. See the sad face with the tear there? But God loves us so much, he sent God the Son to take our punishment for us. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or die, but have everlasting life. His name is Jesus, who we celebrate here at Easter time. He was a real man. He suffered. It hurt a lot. And he died. We talked about that today during announcements, didn't we? Jesus was buried as an apple seed is buried in the ground. But he was really God. And as an apple seed sprouts from the ground and makes new apples possible, Jesus rose from the dead. And the result of that is, what do you think? Beautiful, wonderful, happy new lives for us. Look at all those smiley faces. All because of the work that Jesus the Son did on that cross at Calvary. But before we can have this beautiful, wonderful happiness, there's something else we must have. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus. When you plant an apple seed in the ground, you believe an apple tree will grow from it. That's faith in an apple seed. When you believe Jesus died for you and lives again to give you a beautiful, wonderful, happy new life, that's faith in Jesus. Miss Susie and Mr. John and Mr. Gerald sang a song today about admitting, believing, and confessing. Uh, those are happy days, aren't they? When we admit that we're a sinner, believe that Jesus can forgive those sins and confess them to a righteous and holy Father, that is what we need to do. That's faith in Jesus. Our hearts are like a piece of ground. The ground cannot plant itself with an apple seed. Someone must put the seed into the ground. We cannot put faith into our own hearts. God, the Holy Spirit, makes us believe in Jesus. Sometimes people refer to the Holy Spirit as the comforter. The comforter, one who gives comfort. One who, that you talk, cry out to the Holy Spirit to take care of you during difficult times. He puts faith into our hearts and he keeps it alive and growing as long as we want him to. When an apple seed is planted, in the ground, the rain feeds it, and it begins to grow. When the Holy Spirit puts faith into the heart, he feeds it with God's word, and then faith begins to grow. That's a great picture right there, growing from here, going out in the circles to a larger and larger faith, growing inside of each and every one of us. When the apple tree is grown up strong and healthy, it bears fruit. Those, of course, are apples. When faith is grown up strong and healthy, it bears fruit too. See if you recognize these words from what we've been talking about during announcements. Joy, love, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, humility, faithfulness, and self-control. Where'd that come from? God's word, Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruits of the spirit. Isn't that good stuff this morning? When you pick an apple from a tree, you know it is an apple. It looks like an apple. It has an apple peel. Its flesh is like is an apple. If you plant a seed from its core, an apple tree will grow. Although it has three parts, you know you do not have to have three apples, just one apple. In other words, you don't have to have an apple to eat the peel. You don't have to have an apple to eat the flesh. You don't have to have another apple to make the core. It's all in one apple. Three in one. If you have faith in the true God, you believe in God the Father. You believe in God the Son. 
and you believe in God, the Holy Spirit. You can't just believe in one and not believe in all three. They're all tied in together. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. There is only one true God. There are people in this world who think there are many gods, but there is only one true God, and that's the one in whom we believe and put our trust every single day. Isn't that a great story? Apples and the Trinity. There's another little thing I could tell you, too, that if you think about uh, the three in one, think about water. Water's in three forms, too. The water, the liquid that you drink, if you heat it up, steam comes out, and that's still water vapor. And then if you put it in the freezer and freeze it, that becomes ice. But guess what? It's all still water in the end. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in your heart, and he's there to take care of you and comfort you in times of difficulty. Hope you enjoyed that story. Hope you recognize the fact that uh, we do serve a loving God. We certainly have a Savior in our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have a Comforter in the Holy Spirit. And remember your friend, the Apple, who taught you that lesson today. All right, we'll see you in about 10 days, I think it is, for more pathways, pleasant pathways from Poppy. You have a great Easter, and remember the three-in-one story today and our Lord who loves you so. Have a great day.